This is a scene captured by a surveillance camera in one Chinese city. A man carries away a girl dressed in red on the street, and his accomplice drives a van to meet him. We don't know if the girl can be rescued. China has the largest number of cameras in the world. Some media claim a number of over 200 million cameras. The British Technology Research website published a survey the average Chinese would be under the surveillance of one camera for every two citizens. If the police enabled these surveillance devices, it shouldn't be difficult to find the missing population. However, in China, a red country with a special system, those surveillance devices can't find those missing people. On February 25, 2021, China's Ministry of Civil Affairs and the Institute of Social Assistance jointly released a report, White Paper on China's Missing Population 2020. It states that in 2020, about 2,739 people went missing every day, and 1 million people were missing in a year. Every minute, two persons disappeared in the sea of people. This report intended to praise the Chinese government because this number was lower than in previous years. The report stated that the number of missing persons was 3.94 million in 2016 and 2.6 million in 2017. The high number of missing persons in China is due to abduction, entrapment, or other criminal activities, and victims are mainly women and children. The American report, titled 2019 Trafficking in Persons Report, ranked China as the third least effective country in combating human trafficking, just above Libya, Somalia, and Yemen, where human trafficking is most rampant. In February 2022, a video of a mother of eight children being kept in chains for a long time in a rural village was circulated on social media in China, shocking the entire country. The world doesn't want me anymore. The world doesn't want me. The evidence overwhelmingly shows that the woman was trafficked at the age of 12 and turned into a reproductive tool. This is just the tip of the iceberg. The following video took place in the same area where the mother of eight children is. The fire department was conducting a drill when a girl rushed over to the firefighters and simply clutched onto them for help. According to data provided by the Chinese Ministry of Public Security, which was meant to show off its achievements, we can estimate the magnitude of human trafficking in China. Legal Daily, the official media in China, reported on February 16, 2015, that more than 30,000 women were rescued from trafficking in 2014. There is no way to know how many women remained unsaved, or how many more were trafficked in other years. The following footage shows suspected trafficked women in the hands of traffickers. I gave her some water. That's nice of me. I told you, she's employed by my family. Do you hear me? You say what you need to say and shut your mouth for things you shouldn't. Do you hear me? You shut up. You need to know what to say and what not to say. I saw an ad on the company, then went to his company. It was him, and he brought me here. According to the Chinese media, most of the abducted women are sold to poorer parts of the rural regions where there are more men than women. There are multiple reasons for this phenomena. For instance, serious gender imbalance. It's often attributed to the one-child policy implemented by the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, for more than 30 years. Other factors are the preference for sons over daughters in rural China in selective abortion. Another reason is China's unequal household registration policy and rural poverty. Since the CCP took power, it's adopted a dualistic system of urban and rural household registration, which has kept the rural population at the bottom of the society because they have much fewer resources than the urban population. As a result, men in rural China are the weakest of the weak in the marriage market. 
they don't have enough financial means to solve the marriage problem and have to resort to alternative means of stealing, cheating, or buying. As a result, a large number of girls and women become victims of this trafficking chain, which has led to the lifelong nightmare of countless fathers and mothers. My daughter was lost on April 19, 2008, at Taihe Middle School in Daixing District, Beijing. She was on her way to school, she was 14 years old. A shoe of my daughter was found on the roadside. I have only one child. I have been walking on this road for 13 years. I'm looking for my daughter, Wu Da Hai, who was abducted 14 years ago. My daughter was born in 1997. She disappeared in the afternoon of June 5, 2007, on her way to elementary school in Lujiang County, Anhui Province. She was a third grade student at that time. My daughter has a not so obvious scar under the corner of her left eye. Daughter, where are you? Are you okay wherever you are? Mom has been looking for you for more than 14 years, almost 15 years. In these 14 years, Mom has encountered many difficulties. I'm looking for you, like searching a needle in a haystack. The phenomena of abducting women, although illegal in China, has nevertheless helped the authorities to maintain a stable situation in rural China. Otherwise, a large number of single men with no hope of getting a wife would be a potential source of social unrest. The communist government has not only ignored, but in a way, even connived at this. As a result, it's highly unlikely that women who end up in this situation will be able to escape from rural villages, which are surrounded not only by their buyers, but also by the entire village and urban bureaucracy. Those women who try to escape end up in dire straits. In addition to being chained up, they would likely go from being healthy to mentally and physically disabled. They could spend the next 20 years lying on the ground, lose their ability to speak, or become mentally impaired. One of the Chinese government's working documents, notice of several opinions on the work of rescuing trafficked women and children, goes so far as to say that those who were young girls when they were trafficked and have now reached the legal age of marriage and are willing to continue living with their buyers should complete the marriage registration and household transfer procedures in accordance with the law. Some of the women who were abducted as children when they are lucky enough to reunite with their families have a hard time fitting in. This was the scene in December 2021 when a father found his daughter, who had been missing for 20 years, and cried bitterly. A lecture video by a professor from China University of Political Science and Law in 2020 has been circulating online recently. He said that the maximum sentence for illegally purchasing a parrot is five years, while the maximum sentence for illegally buying one or twelve women is three years, which is equivalent to the maximum sentence for illegally buying twenty bald toads. Therefore, the value of a Chinese woman is less than that of a parrot, and only comparable to that of a bald toad. Because the penalty for the buyer is so light, there are many human traffickers in China, and many daughters who are never recovered. I'm a mother looking for her child. I'm from Handan City, Hebei Province. My name is Han Ya. My daughter was abducted by traffickers on May 26, 2013 at the doorstep of my home. She has been missing for more than nine years. Mom has been looking for you. I'm calling out for you all over the world. Wen Xuan, where are you? I've been looking for you so hard. So hard. In addition, the UNESCO Institute Against Human Trafficking has conducted an analysis of human trafficking in China. It studied 800 cases between 2006 and 2007 and found that 19% of the women were trafficked and then forced into prostitution, and 42% with unknown whereabouts. The difference between these crimes by triads and the crimes of forced marriage described above is that they aren't committed in the mountains or in the rural areas, but often in large cities. 
In addition to girls being targeted, boys face a danger as well. In the following video, the elderly woman bought a dress and turned around to find that her six-year-old grandson vanished. <laughs> Chinese media have reported that 200,000 children go missing each year in mainland China, with an average of about 550 children missing every day. Nearly 80% of these children are abducted and sold, with a 1% chance of recovery. These children are usually abducted before they have a clear memory of their birth families. Hello everyone, I'm from Yanggu, Shandong. My name is Li Yuchun. I'm looking for my son. We thank you all for your help. We need your help. Find my son, Zhai Jian Chao. Hey! What are you doing? Since the police are reluctant to help find their missing children, parents must help themselves. Some parents have banded together to form organizations such as Child Finders. The organization claims to have a current membership of 700 parents, most of whom are low-income migrant workers. The Beijing-based NGO Child Finder says that there are several possible outcomes for abducted children, depending on their age. For children under the age of 5, adoption by a family lacking a boy is the most common outcome. Children between the ages of 5 and 8 are often used as slave labor, prostitutes, or reproductive tools. Some gangs turn the children into handicapped people and force them to beg on the streets. When older children go missing, families are also in a heightened state of fear, as their children are likely to face worse things than death. Hello everyone, my name is Shu Qing from Neijiang, Sichuan. Sorry to bother everyone at this late. My son went missing on February 9th. He has been missing for nine days. He hasn't been home. He was wearing a white top, black jacket, black pants, and white shoes when he went missing. Under the corner of his eye, there's an obvious black mole. He disappeared for 10 days without any reason. We, the family, and the school teachers are anxious. We ask all of you who have seen this video to please contact us if you find any trace of my son. We thank you all. Son, if you see this video, please come home quickly. Your grandparents are going crazy. Our whole family can't hold on anymore. In November 2013, the Chinese-funded Hong Kong-based Phoenix Weekly published a lengthy report, The Shady Side of Human Organ Trafficking in China, admitting that organ transplant tourism to China has flourished over the past decade, with unbelievably efficient transplants frequently featured in the news. International medical experts have analyzed the situation and concluded that there must be a huge underground organ bank in China, even a live organ harvesting bank. The article also suggests that Falun Gong practitioners, inmates of re-education through labor camps, social outcasts, and trafficked women and children in China who have no legal protection may all be targets of organ theft. Hello everyone. This is the Jiujiang College Affiliated Hospital. On February 28th, 2012, it stole Leo Fei's lung lobe, steel organs, don't you touch my banner. You just said I'm allowed to hold a banner. Now you say I'm not allowed to hold it. What are you doing? I'll hold it for a while and then I'll leave. Jiujiang Affiliated Hospital is a subordinate unit of Jiujiang Medical College. It stole organs. On February 28, 2012, it stole people's organs. Some analysts believe that the high rate of child trafficking in China is partly due to the one-child policy, which has created a huge market for the acquisition of boys by families who need them. China's household registration system has also contributed to the rampant child trafficking. The household registration, or hukou system, began in the 1950s. 
Each person's registration is usually tied to their place of birth. It means migrants and their children can't register in the place where they work and are born, even though such registration is usually required to access local social benefits such as buying a house, health care, or schools. Although the Communist Party announced in July 2014 a reform of the hukou system which abolished the distinction between rural and urban households registration, meaning that rural residents could now receive social benefits such as housing subsidies after moving to urban areas. But this reform isn't applicable to metropolitan areas such as Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen, where migrant workers moving to these cities are still restricted by the household registration system. Rural children whose parents work in the cities become easy targets for traffickers, as those families who work in the cities lack the energy to keep an eye on their children, leaving them vulnerable to human trafficking. There are children who have been trafficked and are trying hard to retain their memories, hoping to return to their parents one day. The general public, I hope to get everyone's help. I'm a child abducted. I was born around 1990. I was abducted to Handan City, Hebei province in the winter of 1996, at the end of November on the Chinese lunar calendar. I remember I was abducted when I was with my parents at the place where they worked. My parents worked while looking after my sister and me. We lived in a room on the second floor with a new neighbor next door. It was a human trafficker. I was taken away. I remember my father's name was Yang Xingming, and my name was Yang Yuba. My sister's name, I don't remember if it was her full name, but I called her San Yi. I called my grandmother up or down like this. I called my mother Ma Yi like this. I remember my hometown was a mountainous area. It was very close to the train tracks. I could see a market from the pig pen. I hope you can help me spread the news. Let my family see it. Help me go home soon. Thank you. As we mentioned earlier, China's public security has a strict surveillance system and a modern cell phone signal tracking system. In recent years, police have joined with tech companies to make Chinese people register the cell numbers in real names, and in some provinces, even compulsory photo taking. The surveillance system, built up with massive human, physical, and financial resources, requires the Chinese people to use their real names for virtually everything. Yet, it has failed mysteriously on the issue of human trafficking. In March, the Chinese government, under mounting pressure from the public, made a public statement. Protecting the legitimate rights and interests of the people is something that the people's government must carry on its shoulders. Recently, there have been incidents of serious violations of women's rights and interests in some places. And we are not only saddened by the victims, but also very angry about this matter. Those who disregard the rights and interests of the masses should be resolutely held accountable. And those who commit crimes of trafficking in women and children should be cracked down and punished severely. In reality, Chinese people have been treated the opposite way. On February 21, 2022, a retired associate professor of law wrote a proposal to the Chinese government to establish the year 2022 as the year of anti-trafficking. In the letter, the professor wrote, If human traffickers aren't cracked down on, and if the buying of trafficked women and children isn't cracked down on, more people will fall into the clutches of the devil and live in human lives. Therefore, we must face up to it and implore the Central Committee of Political and Legal Affairs to make this work a top priority. The proposal remained on a Weibo public page for only 20 minutes and was then blocked. And this citizen was summoned by the police for sharing a message about the mothers of the eight children in his own circle of friends on March 8th. <laughs> Yeah, 
。我现在有有权口头传唤你，好吧？中国的法律给了给了我这个口头传唤你的权利，对吧？我现在人民警察有这权利。The mural was created by a student at the Tianjin Academy of Fine Arts. It features a quote from the woman locked up in chains. The world doesn't want me anymore. The black store in the mural is made up of numerous words that spell freedom. After the mural was posted online, the authorities quickly blacked out the mural. The students who created the mural were also arrested by the police.